So the big questions from workshop one, and that's what these Q&A sessions are about. It's about answering the questions about the workshop, okay? Is, uh, ah, new seller. So I have a lot of new sellers. Welcome new sellers. This is their first holiday season on eBay. It's like, oh, is um, Kathy, I'm new. <laughs> what do I do? And this is what I say to you is breathe. What I find with eBay selling, like many things, also social media, is layer, okay? I always say crawl, walk, run. And I'm not saying all new sellers are crawlers because you might have a ton of retail experience. You also might be very experienced from other platforms. So you're coming and walking or running, but just know where you are. I know for me, when I started, I was very much crawling is keep it simple. You're going to listen to some things and go, you don't need to do it all. You really don't. The big thing for a new seller is get your inventory together, excuse me, <clears throat> and list it. I'll have many people, I have a free Facebook group for new sellers, eBay selling basics, nothing but selling basics. And many sellers are even scared to list. Again, crawl, walk, run, list. That's how you're going to learn. Put the listing up and you'll learn. You'll learn what works. You'll learn what titles work, what pictures work. Follow the guidelines. eBay gives you a lot of prompts now when you're listening to help you. When I started years ago, I'm selling on eBay for over 15 years. There were no props. I was like, just list. So eBay gives you a lot of information. Just follow the guidelines and do the best you can. You'll be fine. You will list. You will learn. Get your inventory together. And I really suggest like go through your house and just start pulling things. New with tags is obvious, but a lot of used stuff, collectible stuff, vintage stuff sells. Over-the-counter prescription sells. Things from your kitchen cell. Kitchen is a really hot category right now because so many people are homebound. So gather your items and start listing. And don't be intimidated. If you were in workshop one, you know I have a great quote about that. And if you haven't done workshop one yet, come on over to boot camp, take the workshop, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But don't let people intimidate you and don't compare yourself to other people. You will be fine. Just get listing. Welcome new sellers. Next question was, Kathy, I'm in a very specific niche. So let's say you're selling women's clothing, or let's say you're selling children's clothing or children's toys. You're fairly niche. You're fairly like just in one main big category. And realize some of these categories are huge. Women's clothing is a huge category. Electronics is a huge category, but you're basically in one category. You may sell a variety. I know a lot of my sellers are variety sellers, but look at your inventory. Is there a majority, like your majority is women's or your majority is men's or your majority is kids toys. But this was a question, and I got this from several sellers that really sell solidly in one category, which is also sometimes called a niche, N-I-C-H-E, that you're just selling in a, in a specific category. So the question was, I want to expand, you know, I'm, I'm in this category and they let me know, you know, I'm in this, these categories and I, and I want to expand, but I, I want to stay in this category. I don't want to like add on too much. Um, so I went good. So these are ideas on that. And just to know the next workshop. So today's Wednesday, tomorrow's workshop Thursday, which will be September 10th. We deal with a lot about inventory selection and sourcing. So just know I'm going to have more information for you in there. So um, I want to broaden my niche. So look at what are you selling? Okay, let's just pick women's clothing because it's pretty broad. What brands are you selling? And even my variety sellers, I know you find like certain brands that you really like to source. What are those brands? What other brands are similar to that? Because what it is, is if you have those brands, if you're selling that category, you're attracting those shoppers. So let's just pick something like Free People or Donna Karen or Ann Taylor. This is what you're selling. I'm selling Donna Karen. I sell a lot of Free People. Um, is for people that are buying, let's say a lot of anthropology brands, if they're buying those brands, what other brands are similar, are in that price category, that style category that would appeal to my shoppers. 
and start looking for that. Like, what is that? You can search on eBay. If you have an eBay store, you can use Terapeak. And this is a, a great tip I'm going to give you that I share this a lot of times with my membership group, Social Media Insider. You go on the internet. Let's say it's free people. Type in free people. You can do this for any category, any type of item. It works. Type in the brand, type in the style of thing, whatever it is. So free people tops and then the word BS versus and see what Google shows you because usually what it'll do is it a comparison. You could do eBay, eBay versus and you see what it pulls up. It'll probably pull up Amazon, Walmart. It lets you know the competitor. Google knows what people shop for. Google knows if people are shopping for free people or people are shopping for eBay or people are shopping for Amazon, they know what else is similar because Google knows the habits of millions of shoppers. Okay. So the name of whatever it is, the style, whatever it is, the category, whatever it is versus and see what it pulls up, write it down. If you're not a writer and I'm big on this, I screenshot it with my phone. I take pictures and then go and do your research. So that's how to expand a niche or a category, okay? The next question that I get from people is, Kathy, I've been selling, um, I'm gonna pick something, let's say electronics. I've been selling electronics or I've been selling kids books, I'll pick electronics, and it's just not working for me right now. My sales have really slowed down. And again, so first of all, you're gonna go and look. Is this category selling? That's advanced search. You can use therapy. Okay. Is it selling? Sometimes things just get slow for a period, you know, like all of a sudden it's just slow really for no reason, just for whatever reason, people aren't shopping for that. And then it'll start to pick up again. But if this has been going on for months and months and months, and I have some sellers come to me and it's, it's long, they're, they're having a long time without sales. So you check, you check if your items are optimized, you check your prices, you know, you check everything about your listing. If all of that passes go, and you, you check your, your niche or your category, and you're just noticing that the whole thing has slowed down. That can happen in collectibles. A certain category can be hot, 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 and then it just dies. <laughs> There's really no reason. Is go, okay, the category I'm in, it's just not going anywhere. This happened to me. Um, one of the first categories that I made a lot of money in was VHS movies. And this is going back like 15 years. So what it was, was it was older movies. So it wasn't current. It wasn't like what was currently on, you know, TV or being released. It was the movies from like the forties and the fifties. And I have a theater background and I grew up on old movies. So it's like, I love Betty Davis and Joan Crawford and Henry Fonda movies, all of that. Love it. Know it, know it like the back of my hand. And what I found was, and I just stumbled across this, just buying films for myself was certain titles were out of print and they were not on DVD. So if you wanted to, this is before streaming. So if you wanted to watch this film, you had to get it on VHS. And a lot of these VHSs were going for 15, 20, 25. I had some VHS go for like 80, $90. I mean, high, 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 high. And I was like, this is great. And it tended to be the more obscure ones. So like a Gone with the Wind, isn't gonna, you know, isn't gonna go for the big bucks. It would be an obscure movie of Vivian Lee's or an obscure movie of Lawrence Olivier's. So I started sourcing and selling VHS and I was making tons of money. And this this was like my category. This was my niche was vintage films. It was just do, do, do. And Turner Classic bought the catalog. So they must've gone to MGM and the other studios and, and bought the rights to those movies, smart. And they started putting them out on DVD. And I had like, I'm thinking at the time I had about like a hundred VHS in the house. And I was like, oh. and you know what I did? First of all, I was like, ah, because I realized what had happened. I, I put them in lots and I got rid of them. So it was like, you know what? I had made a lot of money. I had done really well. That niche had ended. It wasn't evil eBay, <laughs> right? It wasn't you know, cheap Asian imports, it was like that technology had moved on and it was up to me to adapt. So I got rid of the VHS that I had, it took about four or five months, but I started to research. And this is what I encourage you. 
if a niche is failing, a category is failing, first of all, similar to the women's clothing with the verses, is there anything related to the niche? So you can take that knowledge. So for me with vintage VHS, is there something film history, 40s, 50s, is there something in there that I can switch to? Paul's saying VHS still does well, but only certain items, Paul. I, I'm telling you, before it was like tons of, of, of stuff. He's saying that never got transferred to DVD. Yes, Bob the Builder, Barney, true. But you need to be very, very careful because, again, with the VHS, certain titles are desirable. It's not necessarily the entire line, but yes, some VHS is still desirable, but do your homework. That's true of any category. Anyway, so the vintage VHS died for me because Turner had bought it and people are buying the DVDs. They're not buying the VHS. Is, is there something related? Is there, uh, you know, film collectibles from this thing? You know, can I go to posters? Can I go to um, books? Is there something that I can do that is related to the category? Why? Because I already know it. I know the stars. I know the period. Is there something related? A, a children's toy category that all of a sudden a certain style of toy just goes dead. Okay, but I have children's toy shoppers coming to me. Is there something else that I can get that is on trend and start to look for that? So that's what I recommend to people that when you're, you're in a certain category and it goes dead, what can I do? Which is use that knowledge and then expand off of that. So that way you're not completely losing your knowledge. Uh, then I have my variety sellers and they're going, Kathy, I really sell soup to nuts and I'm, I'm looking to grow my business. What do I do? And there's a couple of things you can do with that. One is, so if you're selling soup to nuts, which a lot of sellers do, is really take a look at what sells and what sells, you've got two questions to ask yourself. What sells the quickest and what sells for the most margin and margin is your profit after all your expenses you've paid ebay you've paid for the item perhaps you might be doing a facebook ad for some of your items but how much money do you make after everybody's paid your postage and look at that is there a certain category that sells really fast back to children's toys might sell really fast men's clothing for you might sell really fast Women's shoes might sell really fast, but look at your items that turn fairly quickly. And to me, that's like under six months. Then look at your items. They might be considered more long tail. Long tail means it's sitting for a while. It doesn't sell as quickly. Collectibles typically are long tail. They can sit for a year, year and a half, two years. But you buy it at a very low price, let's say only a few dollars, and you're selling it for killer margins. You know, you're, you're buying something for a few dollars and selling it for 50, 100, 200. So for that, you're willing to sit and wait because the margins are so good. However, we all have bills to pay. So my variety sellers, you're looking for a blend. Okay, if everything's long tail, you could potentially go through periods where you have no sales. If you're okay with that, just realize that when you make the sale and you make the killer margins, because you might sell all of a sudden like a bunch of things in one day, maybe a collector hits your, your, your listings and they buy a bunch of things and all of a sudden you're making, you know, a couple hundred dollars in a day or a couple thousand dollars in a day. Yeah. Is no, that's not a typical day for you. You have to learn how to budget. 